thing. And me and John have a very unlikely <coughs> friendship. The context of that friendship happened in a comedy club in New York City. John being 10 years my senior, I was 17. The first time I saw John Stewart, right before he walked in the door, I heard two waitresses at the club talking about how handsome he was. And then they go, oh my God, there he goes. And I looked over and I said, hey, he's all right. <laughs> so what happened was at night, I would go to the comedy cellar. I'm in today's video, I'm going to react to a Dave Chappelle video. Um, this one is called Dave Chappelle on John Stewart 2022 Mark Twain Prize. I'm like, I don't usually do reactions to comedians here on my channel, but one thing that I've definitely noticed is that I'm a lot of channels are reacting to comedians, I'm reacting to TikTok compilations and all those things. And if everyone is doing it, I mean, it means it must work to some degree. So I'm trying to test it out to see if whether if I did reactions to comedians and did reactions to all these compilations, if it's going to help my channel out. So if you enjoyed um, comedic reactions or you're a huge fan of Dave Chappelle, um, please say so in the comment section below so I can find more of, the, more of Dave Chappelle videos, do more reactions for you guys, and yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. You know, this might come as a surprise to many of you. I didn't prepare a speech. <laughs> but that's not because I didn't care. In fact, it's because I cared so much. If you could imagine sitting down and trying to write something about someone that you feel so much about, the way I feel about John, it's very difficult. I won this prize two years ago, and I'm imagining, John, that this is a surreal experience. I imagine you probably didn't even give a till last night. And then last night, you saw all your friends gathering, you saw everyone dressed nice, and you realized you were still alive to see this. It's like getting a preview to your funeral. <laughs> and I line of work, uh, context is everything. And me and John have a very unlikely <coughs> friendship. The context of that friendship happened in a comedy club in New York City. John being 10 years my senior, I was 17. The first time I saw John Stewart, right before he walked in the door, I heard two waitresses at the club talking about how handsome he was. And then they go, oh my God, there he goes. And I looked over and I said, hey, he's all right. <laughs> so what happened was at night, I would go to the comedy cellar and they put me on as the last guy every night. There's six billion people in the world. You can't make six billion anything without some of them being very up. <laughs> Open up a bag of potato chips. What are there, 40 in there? At least five of them are <laughs> burnt and bent over. And <laughs> it's the slot that they give someone that for some reason they think, let's just see what happens to this guy. The thing I remember being 17 in an adult world trying to make something of myself is how kind he was. People like John made me feel safer. He's a friendly guy. Now, the early part of any comedian's careers is embarrassing in hindsight because so many of us imitate our influences or try on different personalities to see what works. But John has been, it's been the same since the very first time I met him. Nice and present. In 1999, he got The Daily Show. That show languished for three years before he got it. Uh, no disrespect to Craig Kilburn, but you know what I mean? Yuck. <laughs> it was like the body of the show was there, but when John got the show, it had a soul. It made people take notice. And in 2002, suddenly, somehow, he became the most popular news show on television. Actually, I know how. He had a good lead in Chappelle show. In that context, it was post 9-11. My career was the first time that I can really remember that there was a stove too hot to touch. No comedian was allowed to talk about the war or uh, Janet Jackson's titty coming out of the Super Bowl. You remember that? You remember that memo that went around? <laughs> uh, 
as we've all learned in our lives, wartime is crazy in America. They do what Noam Chomsky called manufacture consent, and the news was off the chain. And John was the only voice that helped people decipher that madness. It was a really remarkable thing to watch. We told you that it wasn't going to go so well. <laughs> yes, we called it shock and awe, but uh, we meant that in the way of you'll be shocked at how it doesn't go so well. <laughs> and that will make you say, oh. He's been a great friend to me. I'm not here because I love John Stewart. I'm here because <clears throat> he loves me. Because <clears throat> there's never been a time that I called on him and asked him for his help, that he wasn't the first responder. When it was half-baked and I was doing my first movie and I needed a celebrity lift, John was the first one to say, but nah, I'll do it. <laughs> I don't even know if you smoke weed. You seem like a coke guy. <laughs> Jesus Christ, the you have a lot of big names I here. Lived, Dayton, Ohio, had a terrible mass shooting. Nine people were killed, and I called my friends, and they all pulled up. But, John, you were the first one that said, oh, I'll be there. And just days after that massacre, we took that neighborhood and made a much better memory for them. <clears throat> they saw love and support from voices that they trust. When we were on Comedy Central, I picked the brand of irreverence. I said, I'll touch everything they say I can't touch. But John's voice became one that was synonymous with trust. And he left right before the Trump administration, the most cynical time in American politics, a time when nobody trusts our media, where a guy like Donald Trump can just say fake news and say, I just believe this orange head guy. And we miss you very much. <laughs> During the pandemic, when my town was dying and I needed to help raise money to get the economy of the town straight, John was the first responder. He was terrified of COVID and he got on a plane anyway after his friends had died and, and he lost loved ones. He had the courage to get on a plane. He came out and met me and, and we did shows that whole weekend. And every comic who came out there had been off for at least a hundred nights. They were all nervous and they were all scared, except for John. John did 25 minutes off the rip because he had something to say, because he actually means what he says, because he actually thinks about what he says. A lot of comics will take this John for granted. The younger comics, they do what I call wokes. They're not jokes. They don't know the difference between a good point and a good joke. John is very true to the muse. He takes a good point and he makes a good joke of it. John is a miracle to watch you work. You are a cure to what ails our culture. You are a voice that people consistently trust. I wish that you run for president. <laughs> but I imagine it would be hard for a coke guy to do. When you started your career, you never imagined that you would reach a point like this. And the Mark Twain Prize might feel like a finish line or an end to a movie. It is not. It is a starter gun. You were still young. You were still strong. You were still funny. And I do not have the words to say in front of these people how much I love you and how much I respect you. But just know, whenever you call on me, I will come because you have been one of the greatest friends that I've made in 35 years. Congratulations. I'm honored that you got this award. I'm sorry I got it before you, <laughs> but I'm your lucky lead-in. John Stewart, ladies and gentlemen. Oh.
and that's an amazing video and that's a beautiful video and um, i absolutely enjoyed the video i'm um, like i thought this was going to be some sort of gig for dave Chappelle, where he's like brought in to do like a a seven minute stand up um, I, did, I did not even think about the name John Stewart when I saw it or even the, the name um, Mark Twain Price I've never heard of that before so I don't know if it was some sort of award or anything like that so I don't know what to expect um, but everything that he said was very beautiful because he mentioned things that people do behind the scenes that not everybody else sees and things that prove how genuine a person really is and I absolutely loved that video and I hope you enjoyed the video too if you enjoyed the video please say so in the comment section below so i can find more dave Chappelle videos and if you if you're a john stewart fan too and you want to see me do more reactions to, to do reactions to john stewart's videos please say so in the comment section below so i can find um both of their videos do more reactions for you guys and if you enjoyed the video please leave a like if you want to see for if you want to see more from my channel subscribe press the notification bell so you're notified every time when i upload a video and but until next time peace